Born as an evolution of the Super Nintendo controller, the PlayStation 1 has become one of the benchmarks for the industry. And thanks to pressure from competition, since that generation it is compatible with more than just the console. It's now an excellent option for those looking for a great controller. High quality, high availability, and although not that cheap, it has additional features that you might not know of, or you may think they are exclusive to the PlayStation. In this video, we are going to see the newest PlayStation controller, the DualSense, and how good it is outside of its natural ecosystem, with tests on Windows, Android, and iOS. Welcome back, I'm Claudio, and this is Zero to Tech. From its humble origins, the official PlayStation controllers have always been a clear evolution over the previous one, and today, it might be the most popular controller in the world. And since the addition of the analog sticks in the dual analog, the overall design has remained the same to this day. However, each version has brought new features. During the PlayStation 1, Sony was still learning and was not sure where to go. And that's why there are three versions. The original one, like the Super Nintendo controller, but with additional buttons and handles. The dual analog, which added analog sticks to compete with the N64. And the dual shock, which added the rumble feeder. When they released the PlayStation 2, it seemed to be the same controller. But the DualShock 2 added a feeder of measuring the pressure on its front buttons, trying to make them analog. In practice, it was impossible to know the level of pressure without an indicator on the screen. That's why they abandoned that functionality for the PlayStation 3. And they will copy the excellent idea of making R2 and L2 analog, based on depth and not pressure ideal for racing games. Additionally, following the fashion start by the Wii, it includes accelerometers which gave it its name, the six axis, a function that was of little use, especially since they have removed the rumble, which they brought back later with the DualShock 3. With the DualShock 4, things were much clearer for Sony. It didn't have the original shape, Sony finally accepted that the design was not that comfortable, so it has rounded grips. In addition to some new buttons, it also added the touchpad, a speaker, another thing copied from the Wii, and an RGB light, you know, for more frames. And for the first time, Sony officially added compatibility to other platforms. All this brought us here, to the DualSense, the official controller for the PlayStation 5. In the box, there is nothing more than the controller and a small manual. It has the same functionality as the DualShock 4, and like all the previous ones, some new. The first one, is the advanced haptic feedback, developed by the same company that made the one for the Nintendo Switch. It produced realistic vibrations using very precise movements, supposedly detailed enough to distinguish if your character is walking on ground, grass or ice. The second one is the adaptive triggers. L2 and R2 now include actuators to generate vibrations or change the resistance to movement, even lock it, to simulate different situations during gameplay. The last one is the inclusion of a microphone inside the controller. The best part is that all this functionality is not limited just for the PlayStation. You also have it available on the PC, with compatible games. Design-wise, for the first time, they leave the circles which house the D-pad and the front buttons, and these are now on the surface of the controller. But using them is exactly the same. The analog sticks feels very similar, but a bit stiffer. Now they have a patterned texture all around, even though the material feels like the same rubber. I hope they last longer, because the old ones tend to get very sticky. They also have the typical click for R3 and L3. The front buttons are slightly harder, but with the same trouble as before. And for the first time, they are not marked with the classic colors, but rather in the color of the controller. Which there are many, and generally available, not just as special editions. The buttons are now made of a clear plastic that shows the figure in the background. The shoulder buttons have a similar feel to the PlayStation 4 ones, with R1 and L1 having a slightly improved feel. The analog ones now have a little more trouble, and they have the new features I mentioned before. The D-pad has the same clear plastic as the front buttons, and feels a little better. Directions have a very clear feel, and there is less sticking when doing swipes. The rest of the buttons feel the same, and Along with the speaker, they are in the same place. But the touchpad has no longer the dot pattern, 
and now comes with the color of the controller, with RGB around it instead of just a line in the top. Below, we can see a new hole for the new microphone, and the only new button to mute it. In general, it is very similar, but handles are a bit thicker, so you might feel the sticks a bit further away. This one is much heavier, with 280 grams against the 210 from the previous one, all to accommodate the new technology and the battery which is twice the size. It now has USB-C port for charging. To turn it off, press and hold the button with the PlayStation lock, and don't forget to do it because it won't turn itself off till the battery runs out. We already had too many specifications, so let's go to the tests. We start with the channel's favorite, iOS. <laughs> just kidding, Android. I started testing with my Poco F2, which I had to downgrade to Android 11 to solve some issues. Pairing it is easy, when you know the trick. Just press the share button and then the PlayStation button. This starts the pairing mode. Then, search for it and pair it with your phone. Once connected, the lights glow blue. If you want less latency, you can also connect it directly to the phone with a USB-C to USB-C cable. In this case, it lights up with a blinking orange glow, since the battery is charging. The only problem we had with the USB is that it also detects the controller as a headphone. That cuts off the sound from the speaker, and while the controller has its own speaker and headphone jack, you cannot hear anything there. The only way to listen was connecting additional headphones. In the gamepad tester, we can see that the signal sent by some buttons is wrong. For example, L3 and R3 send start and select and the share button and menu, R2 and L2, and multiple weird changes. This affected us in Rush Run, where we had to manually set throttle and brake to get them in the right place. At least, all the buttons work, even the click on the touchpad. The sticks draw a very even and precise shape, with well-rounded corners, and never off, no matter how fast you pull. Easily, one of the best we have tried. This is great for Call of Duty. The game detected and configures itself to show which buttons to use. You must change the control type on settings, but there are still screens you must use the touch. Of course, it will pair you with people who are also using a controller, so the games should be more even. In the game, it works like any shooter. The stick sensitivity is perfect and very smooth. It is very easy to aim and all the buttons work perfectly. I tried to use it with PS Remote Play to use it with my PlayStation 4 on the phone but the app doesn't detect it as an official controller and won't let you use it. So, if you cannot use it for PlayStation, then the next thing was to try it with Xbox via xCloud. And there it does work, but the buttons are a mess, they are not in the right place. Mainly R2 and L2, which are the most important for Forza Horizon, I tried changing them in the game settings, but it detects them as digital, which is not the same. And the front buttons are also a mess, it is not a good option. So the next part was to test it with emulators and take the opportunity to test the accuracy and sequences on the D-pad. The same pattern placement issues affects RetroArch, but it's easily fixed during the full button assignment. Then we were able to test Contra 3, where the separation is very good. You can force the mix, but it requires a lot of pressure. It will never happen accidentally, so like the ones before it, for precision, it's excellent. Where it does change a little bit is in the sequence test. Don't worry, it works great, and I had no problem pulling any of the power moves. The detail is that the new texture, which is super smooth, this means your fingers won't slip as smoothly as with previous ones. A little different, yes, but it is still an excellent D-pad. On the iPhone, things are better. First, the moment you pair it, it appears as a dual sense, not just as a wireless controller. And the lights glow orange, not blue. In the gamepad test, all the buttons are in the right place, which speaks of a better integration. And it shows when playing. We tried the dead cells first, and perfect. All the buttons are marked with the correct symbol and the response to any action is immediate. So I decided to try also with xCloud, and here, a completely different story. With other buttons in the right place, Playing is as simple as with an Xbox controller. Everything works flawlessly, including the analog triggers. If you prefer the PlayStation controller but want to play Xbox games, this is a perfect option. Since we can play Fortnite on iOS again, 
Even if it's only via xCloud, I tried it, and very well. The analog sticks have a very good feel when moving them. They have a perfect stiffness to aim very easily. In a few minutes I played, I was able to make some kills. And it worked so well on the iPhone, that kept me wondering if the problems with Android weren't caused by the OS version. So I start testing again, now with a Galaxy S22 Plus, and it's a completely different story. Now it works perfectly. It detects every button in the right place, and with this, all the problems we had with PS Remote Play and xCloud disappeared. I was able to use both applications without any problems, and without changing anything else. It is the only way to use your controller to play PlayStation 4, because you cannot connect it directly to the console. Even the touchpad works as a mouse in Android, which is not very useful, but good to know. So I decided to test it with Aether SX2, which worked great. It detects it and configures it automatically, even the rumble works. So, your result with Android may be completely different if you are not using Android 12. It might not even be a problem with the version, but with the phone manufacturer, since they decide which drivers to include. But while Android 11 gave us problems, in Android 12 and iOS, perfect. It is one of the best controllers you can buy. Now let's review the support on PC, and this is where Sony's new philosophy shows, because there is not only the option to use the additional features of the controller, but they also offer a software that allows you to update the firmware, so you don't need a PlayStation 5 at all. If you connect the controller with USB, you will see that Windows, in addition to the controller, adds two audio devices, one for the microphone and one for the speaker. However, for them to work well, we need to make a small change in Windows. For this, right-click on the speaker in the system tray, then open sound settings, and we look for the sound control panel link and select it. Now, look for the speakers assigned to the wireless controller. Then, we click on configure, and on the next screen, we click next. And now, we activate these two checks. After doing so, you can reopen the same screen, and you'll see that when the rear speaker sound, you will feel vibration on the controller. This allows you to use the headphones connected to the controller and the microphone, so you can use it for voice chat. But don't expect the microphone quality to be the best. Not the best, but more than enough. The only detail to all this is that it requires the controller to be connected via USB. Let's hope that Sony releases drivers to do the same via Bluetooth. The other functionality, adaptive triggers, works both wired and wireless. Its use depends on the game developer supporting it. In theory, both functionalities are supported in Genshin Impact, but while the vibration is subtle but works, the triggers always remain the same, so I tried them in Deadloop, and everything worked perfectly. The haptic feedback and adaptive triggers, they feel the same as if you were playing on the PlayStation 5. It's nice that Sony allowed the implementation of these features on other platforms, and not force us to spend a kidney to buy the new console. Compatibility with the rest of the games is as you would expect. On Steam, it works with any game thanks to the platform compatibility features. In the games from the Epic Store, it also worked, with native support both in Rocket League and Fortnite. Everything is even displayed with the correct icons for the controller. Where it does not work is in games on the Xbox platform. Fortunately, you can use an application called DS for Windows to make them work. This was made for the DualShock 4 but they have been including DualSense functions in the latest releases. With it, you can change the way the controller works with the computer to appear as an X-input controller, and then use it in any Xbox or xCloud game. It even supports vibration, although <laughs> obviously not the advanced one or the triggers. And DS for Windows also enables additional features, such as being able to use the touchpad as a mouse in Windows, and it lets you try out the adaptive triggers configure the motion controls, and much more. It is a must-have app for anyone who is using this controller on a PC. In general, you have all the functionality of the controller available, but on Windows, which makes it one of the best controllers for this platform. Very good in everything. Finally, there's the price. Officially, it costs $70, but it finally has some discounts. Just today, there is this promotion for $60. 
since Microsoft started to open the compatibility of their controllers to other platforms, and Sony decided to respond by doing the same, it has become much easier to have a controller that works anywhere. And the DualSense is just that, the next evolution from Sony's part. A first level controller, very useful even if you don't have a PlayStation. Don't forget to check the MOGA XP5 review, also a great controller for phones. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Remember, retro games, modern technology, zero to tech.